Well, well good evening. Uh, we now have a hur major hurricane at 125 mile an hour sustained maximum sustained winds. Uh, the storm is currently about 125 miles west of Tampa, about 175 miles south of Tallahassee. Uh, it does look like this storm will strengthen uh, as it prepares to make land landfall later this evening. Uh, initial estimates uh, when we woke up this morning were that it would probably make landfall uh, sometime in the earlier side of the evening. Now it looks like it'll be uh, closer to, to 11 p.m. It is starting to move quickly, but for people that are particularly, if you're looking at where this is now expected to make landfall, uh, the models have continued to move it a little bit east. I think you're looking at anywhere from that Wakulla Jefferson County line over to Taylor County. Uh, most of the data we have does have a Taylor County uh, landfall, but all those areas there along the Big Bend Coast and in areas that are low lying that are susceptible to potentially major storm surge, uh, you're under an evacuation order. Some people have. Uh, because the storm isn't going to get here till a little later, we're going to see some effects soon. But right now, you actually still have time uh, to be able to evacuate. I mean, you can go to Leon County and go to a shelter. You can get to a place that is going to be on higher ground and is not going to be susceptible to storm surge. The winds are going to be uh, significant, uh, but most structures in Florida are going to be able to handle uh, the winds that will be there if you're interior and at a place that is either a shelter uh, or, or a residence that, that, that that's built for that. So you still have time to do that now. We thought the storm was going to get here a little bit earlier based on the estimates. It's going to get here a little bit later. So in these big bend areas, uh, you still have time. Now, in other parts of Florida, listen to your emergency managers. I know Pinellas County said last call they were going to shut the bridges down to the barrier islands, I believe, at 6 o'clock. Uh, so people have either heeded that or not. Uh, the, the bridges in the Tampa Bay area, Gandhi is about to close, uh, Howard Franklin, Courtney Campbell have been closed, uh, and of course Sunshine Skyway had, had been closed earlier. Uh, so the time in that part of the state is, is, is coming to an end. But if you're here in North Florida, if you're in one of those areas, you see the potential for the storm surge, uh, you still have time to do it. So we would encourage you to heed uh, those evacuation orders as appropriate in your local area. You're going to lose power, so you still have time if you have power. Make sure your phones are charged. Make sure you, you have what you need to be able to get through a period of time where you're going to have an interruption in power. Uh, if you're sheltering in place uh, in one of those evacuation zones, make sure you let people know that you're doing that, whether it's a friend, a family member. I know some of the counties say you can, you can uh, check in with them and give them that information if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, but but please do that if you're if you decided to hunker down. Uh, don't once we start to get the real nasty conditions, uh, don't at that point go on the roadways. Uh, that is very hazardous. Uh, that does produce fatalities when people do that in the middle of the storm. Uh, if you are sheltering at home, uh, be cognizant of what trees are around you. You're going to have you have 125 mile an hour maximum sustain right now probably is going to be higher. Whether it hits as a Category 4 or Category 3, it's going to be a significant storm. And even as it moves inland throughout northern Florida, uh, you are going to see trees that are going to be, that are going to be falling down. That's just the, the reality of what we're doing, of what we're seeing here. And if you hear the tree limbs snapping around you, uh, sometimes it almost sounds like fireworks are going off, uh, treat that as a tornado uh, shelter in a part of the home uh, that would be where you'd have protection from that. And, and this is the type of thing where, uh, especially as that eye wall moves through, you're going to have some serious, serious uh, storms. And there also, there also may be tornadoes that will be spun off from this as well. And that could be producing uh, some, of these, uh, uh, some of these reactions. Uh, if you have really severe weather, and then all of a sudden it gets very calm, that probably means you're in the eye of the storm. Uh, so don't go out into that. Uh, that eye wall will collapse quickly and unexpectedly, and you will get very bad weather very quickly as well. There's going to be power lines that are going to be down. Be careful about that, particularly in the streets, particularly near your residence. 
Uh, do not mess with down power lines. Those can be very, very hazardous. Uh, the storm is going to hit Florida's Big Bend region sometime this evening, likely around 11 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be dark. Uh, don't go out as soon as that storm passes, if it's still dark, and, and try to do work around your house or, or worry about things. Let it get light. There's going to be hazards there. It's just not something you want to be navigating in the dark. Uh, when we get into tomorrow, you may have some things on your roof. Just be careful with, with using ladders. There's going to be groups that are going to be helping people uh, fix their homes in the appropriate areas. So if you're somebody that uh, you may have some physical limitations, uh, don't put your health at risk uh, for that. Watch the standing water. We've already seen, seen a lot of standing water in different parts of the state already. We're likely to see more of that. Uh, you never know what's in the standing water. When you have streets that are flooded, don't try to drive through the flooded streets. Uh, you are going to end up having your car stall out and then you're going to be stuck, not to mention the hazards of just being on the roads in those circumstances with having, having accidents. Uh, we've been working here at the state really starting the weekend. Clearly, we did a state of emergency at the beginning of the week. Uh, we have 1,100 missions in progress through the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, those continue to be filled, and they will continue to be filled until they're all done. Uh, some of those, many of those, are more for post-storm resources rather than pre-landfall resources. Uh, we do have the linemen staged uh, throughout the, the state. Uh, you have Duke, TECO, FPL. Uh, we have the co-ops, we have the municipals. I think everybody's on the same page. Uh, as soon as this storm passes, uh, there needs to be a strong effort to get the power restored, and they will be uh, working to do that. And they've done a great job on this in recent years, and I think we've really set the, set the standard here in the state of Florida. Uh, we have 130 generators that are at various gas stations. So when they lose power, most of the newer gas stations or the larger stations have generators per Florida law or have an ability to get the power back on. Uh, some of the smaller ones don't. And when you're talking about the Big Bend region, that can be significant. So those generators have been distributed and we should not see major interruptions in fuel uh, given that. We have all state agencies that are on standby, 3,500 National Guard soldiers. We can surge that very quickly uh, if we need more. Florida Highway Patrol has 200 state troopers that are on standby. They will go and be dispatched immediately following the storm to areas that need help. Florida Department of Transportation standing by. 307 cut and toss crews to get the roads cleared. 120 bridge inspectors to get the bridges back open. Uh, almost 700 generators, uh, big uh, 200 plus pieces of large equipment, and then the large pumps, which they have used not just in hurricanes, but in some of the rainstorms we've had where you've seen flooding in, in recent uh, months. FDOT has used that and it's been very effective. Uh, we have done a fuel mission, even though we've sent the generators to the stations. We haven't necessarily seen fuel shortage, but you do have ports that are closed. Uh, so we have uh, almost half a million gallons of diesel in reserve that are being uh, brought into the state, uh, 132,000 gallons of regular motor, motor vehicle gas, 36,000 gallons of propane, uh, and 5,000 gallons of jet fuel. So you're close to almost 700,000 gallons between everything we have across the variety of fuel needs. And we um, don't anticipate having to use all or even most of that, uh, but we wanna make sure that people have the fuel that they need, particularly as the storm passes. So if you're in one of these areas in the northern part of the state, particularly on the coast and those low-lying areas that will face the brunt of the storm surge, uh, you still have time, but you gotta do it right now. Uh, every minute that goes by, you're gonna start to see conditions worsen. You know, I was out, you look this afternoon in Tallahassee, it was honestly, wasn't that bad. It's gonna get a lot worse uh, in Northern Florida uh, as that storm gets closer. So I wanna thank everybody that's been involved in the prep. Uh, we've got the assets that are there. People just need to make sure they're making decisions that have their, themselves and their families safety in mind. We can't control uh, how strong this hurricane's gonna get. We can't control the track uh, of the hurricane. Uh, but what you can control is you know, what you can do to, uh, to put yourself in the best chance to be able to ride this out in a way that's going to be safe. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin Guthrie.
Thank you, Governor, again for your unwavering support and commitment to the safety and well-being of Floridians. We really appreciate it. As the governor said, we uh, continue to work on more than one, uh, I'm sorry, 1,100 missions, and we continue to fill those. Again, as he said, there are most of them at this point are going to be post-impact uh, resources that are ready to move into the area immediately. Uh, Life-threatening storm surge is expected along Florida's Gulf, uh, West Gulf Coast and Big Bend. Floodwaters are hard to navigate during the day, but even harder to see at night. At this point, it is the last hours to safely evacuate ahead of Hurricane Helene from the Gulf Coast and Big Bend. If you have not already left, um, you're probably going to need to start looking at it sheltering in place. Stay inside, stay safe, stay put. Do not attempt to leave your home or drive during the storm. The governor has mentioned this. It's going to be dark outside. Um, when it starts to make landfall, the street lights, the minimal street lights that we do have in the Big Bend area are going to go out. It is going to be very dark. Uh, so please do not drive, do not go out, wait to daylight, and then only drive if you need to. As you heard the governor say, if you hear the tree snapping, it's probably um, it's treated it like a tornado. You're, you're in imminent danger of potentially a tree falling on your house. So please make sure you're moving away from the windows and doors and getting to a central point of your home. Protect your house, yourself from the flying debris. Uh, put heavy coats, pillows, blankets, uh, any, any type of material that you can put there on top of yourself. Make sure you're doing that. That'll help for lacerations um, again. And you know, again, just do the best you can with what you have right there in your home. Stay put uh, until the storm passes. The governor's already talked about if, if uh, literally like a light switch. If you've got really, really severe weather and all of a sudden it is completely like nothing ever happened, you're 99% sure you're in the eye wall of the hurricane. So do not go outside. Make sure you stay put. We are anticipating the power outages with the storm. Take time now uh, while you actually have power to top off all of your battery chargers. Uh, make sure you just leave them completely plugged in, ready to go. Um, until that power goes out so you get maximum use out of it. Backup generators are going to start becoming more and more of an issue. So please, uh, we, we have done a really good job of reducing the number of carbon monoxide poisoning fatalities after storms. We want to have zero in this disaster, so keep those generators 20 feet away from outside your home from any open doors or windows. Make sure you let it cool down for 20 minutes before you refuel it. And when you can safely do so and get back to an open store, go ahead and spend $20 and get yourself a carbon monoxide monitor in your home. After the storm has passed your area, it is critical that you list the local authorities for guidance on when it is safe to go outside and return home. Do not venture out. Hazardous materials, debris, I'm sorry, hazardous materials, debris, and flooding could still be present along with down power lines. If you see dangerous conditions, please call 911 and report them to your local authorities. Residents needing resources after Hurricane Helene can call our state assistance information line at 1-800-342-3557. That's 1-800-342-3557. We again have individuals speaking English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole available to answer any and all of your questions. Please be sure that you follow the agency on X and Instagram at F-L-S-E-R-T, that's at Florida CERT, and on Facebook at FDEM as we continue to share important, up-to-date, real-time information. And again, Governor, thank you so much for your leadership and your support. Sharon. All right, thank you, Governor, for your leadership, and good evening. We've continued very close coordination with Florida Highway Patrol, with Kevin at the Division of Emergency Management, and General Haas at National Guard. As you heard from the governor, we are very prepared for this storm. We have our people, our assets, our equipment staged all within a reasonable um, distance from the impact area. We're going to be ready to go to work as soon as this storm passes through with boots on the ground. Um, we have shut down all of our construction projects across the state, and all of our contractors also stand ready to support and recover from the impacts of hur Hurricane Helene. We're beginning to see a lot of local road closures from storm surge and localized flooding. Please remember you can always check fl511.com for road closure and traffic information. It is going to be your most up-to-date place to get traffic information. 
As the storm approaches uh, the state, bridges have begun closing as winds increase. Uh, you heard the governor mention Sun Sunshine Skyways closed, the Howard Franklin Bridge, the Courtney Campbell Causeway, and also Gandhi Causeway is closing within the hour. Please, you know, if you see water on top of the road or lapping o over bridges, please do not drive through it. It can be very dangerous. We have 120 bridge inspectors ready to go as soon as the storm passes through to inspect bridges and make sure they're safe for travel. We're closely monitoring the major east-west roadways within the storm's path for Hurricane Helene. That's going to be I-10, U.S. 98, and U.S. 19. We're working directly with local utility companies to have a direct line of communication to expedite our cut and toss efforts. A lot of times when storms like this come through, you can have oak trees wrapped in power lines. It takes very close coordination with utilities, and we're ready to do that. Uh, the cut and toss efforts have actually already begun in southwest Florida. The impacts were not that significant um, where the storm has already passed. FDOT crews have already driven and cleared more than 2,000 miles of roadway in southwest Florida, so we've already started working. Um, once the initial, initial response is through, our cut and toss crews will transition to debris removal. And under Governor DeSantis' leadership, we, we will stand ready, just like with Adalia and Debbie, to support fiscally constrained counties with the debris removal operation. Um, please listen to your local law enforcement, your local emergency offices. If roads are not safe to drive, please do not drive on them. Water over a road can be very dangerous, especially around culverts and bridges. Every storm season, we see people try to navigate through water. You have no idea what's going on underneath the water. Please do not drive through it. We're going to stay in touch with our airports and seaports. Um, seaports are closed water side right now. Airports are going to reopen just as soon as practically feasible. Um, and thank again, Governor, thank you for your leadership and support. So we are uh, get it, getting close to having a, a landfall. Uh, I think the, the, the track has, is kind of taking it into that Taylor County, but I would say anywhere from uh, Wakulla Jefferson County line uh, over into Taylor is, is where a lot, of the, a lot of the models have it. But keep in mind that uh, wherever that eye hits, particularly on the northeast side of that storm, that's going to whip up a lot of storm surge. And so if, so if it's hitting Taylor, you know, you're looking at coastal, Levy, Dixie, uh, that, that's going to be some significant surge. Uh, on the west side of the storm, you still have surge, but, but it is not going to be as high as the ones on, on the northeast side. That's just how these things work. So where it hits is important for the wind. The wind is going out pretty far from this storm. Uh, and so you're going to have hurricane force winds for probably 50 miles outside of the eye of the storm. Uh, and then you're gonna continue to see surge, particularly in that big bend area. So, uh, but people do have time. If you're in those coastal areas, particularly in that big bend, uh, if you wanna get out of Dodge, uh, you still have time to do it. We're, we're likely gonna see conditions worsen, but, but if you go right now, you're probably gonna be okay. Uh, and then if you decide not to, uh, hunker down, uh, you, you gotta you gotta be as safe as you can. I will say that regardless of what people uh, decide to do, we have resources that are staged. Whether it's National Guard, whether it's Fish and Wildlife, uh, whether it's our our uh, State Guard, all these assets that can go and help with with search and rescue efforts if people are are caught in in, in difficult circumstances. You don't want that to be the case. Uh, and just keep in mind that if you do find yourself in those situations, uh, those rescue efforts will be undertaken, but once it's safe to do so, they're not gonna go out in a category three hurricane trying to effectuate rescue. So the storm will pass and then they will go in and, and help people that are in need. So we, we have that, locals have that, uh, and you'll see those resources be put to bear if needed, but it will likely not happen until that storm passes. So just keep that in mind. If you, if you stay behind and then you call in the middle of the storm, uh, I think in pretty much all instances, they're gonna say, uh, we're gonna have to wait. So, uh, so, so be smart uh, over these next few hours. With that, yes. Governor, I'm curious if you've seen that post from the Taylor County Shower's Office that basically said that uh, if people were staying behind uh, despite the evacuation order, that they needed to put their name and information like their birth date in permanent marker on their limbs. Is that too much or is that fair? Well, I think people still have time to, uh, to, to effectuate an evacuation 
in some of those areas. I mean, particularly you look at Taylor County, you know, you look at that I is, is kind of uh, is heading in that direction potentially. It's a very real, real possibility that this storm will make landfall in Taylor County. So you're looking at those, particularly on the coast there, uh, you're going to look at seeing some pretty significant storm surge. And if the storm surge is, you know, I think they've said a maximum could be 20 feet. I don't think we've ever had 20 feet recently. I know Ian, I think, got to about, about 18 feet. Uh, but even if it's 10 feet, uh, that is really significant, and, and that will have really serious consequences and so so people still have time to to kind of make those judgments i mean obviously our state policy is not saying people have to use use marker to do whatever but uh but you do have time to do if you do hunker down uh i don't think you're going to have the the local sheriff's department i don't think you're going to see state resources brought to bear for the the rescue until it's safe to do so and, um, you know, we've had examples in storms where people were caught in very difficult circumstances. But basically, I think when you when you call 911 or you call the sheriff's department, uh, they're going to say, OK, give me your name. Where are you at? As soon as it's safe to go, we'll send people. But they are going to wait to, for it to, to be safe to go. Um, with this being a night landfall, how are you guys going to like implement those resources right away? You guys are telling people to wait till daylight to go out and survey the damage your property what's the state doing especially with people like their resources right behind the store well uh, i mean i think kevin kevin can jump in uh, on this but i'll just say if you call 911 or you call for help they're going to go i mean if, if it's nighttime they're going to go and, and and they're going to try to rescue it's it's more a question of when the storm passes um you know these folks you know they they, they can operate in the night but I would say cut and toss, most of those things are just going to require daylight, power restoration. The crews will likely start getting there first thing in the morning. Uh, I know you have FPLs, got a lot of them staged in Bay County. So you may see them coming over to the tailors and, and to some of these uh, counties for restoration. But it isn't going to happen at, at 2 in the morning. And Cody, just a little bit more on the tactical discussion of that. Uh, to the point where the governor says we have resources in Bay County. We have a whole lot of resources in the Ocala footprint right now and, and even down at Orange County Convention Center. That's where a lot of our urban search and rescue assets are staging. So tactically how that's going to work is um, as, as they start moving into this area, including um, the FPL resources staged in Wamama and, uh, Wamuma in the uh, Leesburg area, um, all of that will start to move with the assistance of the Florida Highway Patrol and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, the, the DAX cut and toss crews. They will all work collectively as a team to work into the area. We have some of those staged in area right now. For instance, the uh, Florida National Guard Red Horse Unit is staged just right up the road at the Armory here in Tallahassee. So again, it's more of like a hub and spoke system where you have necessary resources in strengthened, hardened buildings, and then they'll start working themselves out there outward from there as teams of state agencies to successfully get to where we need to be. Do these teams have the opportunity to work at night? 100%. Is it safe to do so? Absolutely not. If they, if they can, and within safety protocols, they will work the best that they can. But I really think with this thing making landfall at 11 o'clock tonight, we're really not going to get a cessation of winds to actually get out there until probably about the time the sun comes up. So I think actually in this case, it's actually going to work out to where we're going to get a full day of sunlight for all of our emergency responders to get out there and do really, really good solid work. And we will be, we pride ourselves on being fast. We will have those commodities moving into these areas within probably 12 to 24 hours. Yeah, and I think the timing is, um, from an operational perspective, you're going to be able to maximize the response if the storm hits at 11, you're going to have serious winds probably for several hours after that. And so they're going to be able first thing in the morning daylight and they're going to be able to go all, all day. If the storm hit at seven o'clock, I mean, m not much would have probably been able to get done in those wee hours of the morning uh, anyways. And so 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 the timing is probably going to be good for them to get a whole day's worth of restoration cut and toss under their belts and and take care of businesses as best they can and and of course on the recovery uh you know they're gonna they're gonna respond when it's safe to do so i think it's less about light or dark more about the safety and and this is going to be for the next uh however many hours 
uh, you're going to start to see hazardous conditions. Then when it makes landfall, it's going to be really hazardous. Governor, um, I ask you this, I think, every time we have a hurricane. Do you feel like the state has done everything that it can to be as prepared as possible for the storm? Yeah, I think every time we do these things, uh, we get better at, uh, at, at stuff. And so, for example, we, we've done these flood protection. Uh, debuted that during Debbie. Now we have them around fire stations, utility substations. Uh, we have some of the, um, uh, the electrical. I mean, the state doesn't obviously run the uh, electrical, but the municipals, the rural co-ops, in addition to the private companies, it's all like, okay, storm's here. We know we got to do. You did not see that in the past. You, know, you go back to Hermine. Did you see Tallahassee mobilizing the way it has? No. So uh, I think that, that we have a good culture in Florida uh, for prep, and, um, and, and, you know, we'll see. I think people have, you look at kind of these paths of how they're, they're projecting it, and people have taken it seriously. It, is it going to be a direct hit on Tallahassee? Well, the most recent models say maybe it's going to go just east, but you're going to have impacts that are going to be significant. I mean, you are going to have hurricane force winds. If it hits in Taylor County, you're still going to have hurricane force winds in Leon County. I mean, that's just the reality. So I think people have done a good job. I think that they've, um, they've taken it seriously, uh, certainly on a preparation from power to logistics and then the local governments. And so um, we'll uh, hope for the best over the next six or so hours in terms of minimal amount of damage, but there is going to be damage and there's going to be a response. And uh, I think we'll all be on top of it. All right, thank you. Oh, and let me just say to our wonderful first lady, happy anniversary, 15th year anniversary, spent in the emergency operations center, may not have been what we uh, had uh, drawn up back uh, 15 years ago, but uh, I just wanted to send her my love.